Hey everybody, this is Richie Allen and you are watching the Make Peace with War podcast. We fight battles every day, sickness, disease, discouragement, depression, anxiety, financial issues, devastating events, deep losses. The state of our external and internal worlds and the state of the church can leave us with physical, mental, and spiritual wounds from the battle. The goal of Make Peace with War is to walk through these battles together and draw strength and encouragement from each other, to master a mindset of peace in the middle of warfare, internal peace in external chaos. Listen, I don't have all the answers, but I know this. We find the answers when we search for them. So let's discover together how to fight our battles, not just with peace, but from peace, from a peaceful place that is deeply anchored and isn't shaken in storms. Make Peace with War is a journey into living by, through, and in the Spirit with deep discussion and practical insights into becoming peaceful warriors. Welcome to Make Peace with War. Hey guys, we are starting a mini series here in the podcast uh, called Church Ish. And we, we want to talk about things in the church that are uh, things that are going good and things that need to be improved as well. Um, and, and why are we having these conversations? Well, you'll, you'll see a little bit more about the why when, we, when you start the first episode of this, this series. But, uh, but we are we're coming at this from a position of we love the church. This is not a a trying to destroy the church, trying to tear it down. No, we're trying to build the church up. And we have to be self-aware enough as church leaders, as, uh, as men and women of God, to say, hey, there are some things that we need to improve. We can talk about the great things that, that we are doing, and I think that's wonderful, but we can't focus only on those things. We have to look at the things that need to be improved to better help us reach people, keep people, and develop people and disciple them. And if we're not careful, sometimes we can ignore the systems and the things that need to, that, that are causing issues that are actually causing people to run away from God. And instead of doing that, we need to address them. So it, we, we're going to have some conversations. It'll be it'll be good conversations. They're going to be healthy conversations. Um, and before we even get into this, I need you to understand that this is not going to be a bashing session. This is not a series that we're going to bash everything a, about the church. That's not what this is for. This is, hey, we've been there. We've been a part of this. Here are the things that we could have done differently. And how do we do it differently? So these are the kinds of conversations that we're going to have here. And so uh, none of this is from a position of I know best or the people that are with me know best. No, these are simply discussions where we can say, how can we improve? And God, can you show us how do we do this in a way that pleases you, that makes the body of Christ better that's what we're looking for, and that's what we're hungry for through this series. So uh, today we're starting a two-part. Uh, uh, we I had one long uh, one long interview with my friends Jennifer Foster and Natalie Biggs, and I had a really long interview. It ended up being a, a little over an hour and a half, somewhere around that time period. And I figured it'd probably be better for us to split it into two things. So today we're going to be talking a little bit more about church. Uh, as a corporation, and uh, and part two, we're going to kind of jump a little bit more into into giving and the legacy and and what that's supposed to mean and what it kind of is right now. Um, so it's going to be a very interesting uh, series of conversations. So I'm excited that you're here. I'm really really happy that you've t- taken the time to to sit with this. Uh, feel free to comment to to share. To like this podcast, if you like it. If you don't like it, you don't have to do that. But I'd love to hear your comments. I'd love to hear your feedback. I think discussion is the key. If we're sitting around a table discussing it, out of the mouth of two or three, let every word be established, the Bible says. And I think that is how we find answers, is when we sit around a table and go, what can we do different and what can we do better? And so I'd love to hear uh, hear your opinions, your thoughts on this. So feel free to comment and subscribe and like and all the things that you know you're i'm supposed to say that you're supposed to do so um anyway have a great day and uh i hope you enjoy this episode god bless i just hit record so we're recording okay (laughs) (laughs) Um, 
Okay, so, um, yeah. So what were we what were we talking about just a second ago? There's something we were talking Branding. about. Branding. Huh. Yeah. Oh. Um, Let's, let's pray before we get there. Lord, help us to do a good job today, God. And I pray that you help us to do this in the right way, with the right uh, motives, right heart, and um, so that the, the, your church can be improved on the earth, Lord, and, and be more like your kingdom. And God, I pray that you would help us to make sure that we check our spirits the entire yes. time we're doing this yes. so that we don't do anything out of bitterness or out of uh, offense, but that we do it to help make things better and and protect people so god i pray that you would do that and give us wisdom in that and help us have a good time in the process amen amen, amen. why is uh oh why do i want to cry just even that that prayer <laughs> i i think it well, honestly i think like i don't know if you guys felt it but like i just feel the the weightiness of it yeah like you yeah. know, just like it's sitting with me. And I think that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. I think it should sit with all of us because mm -hmm. just the topic at hand, you know, like you, you, I'm scared to talk, yeah. you know, um, about the church because I know how much it means to the Lord. And I really do fear, I, like I have a healthy fear of the Lord and yeah. I want my heart to be right, Richie. Like I, I don't, want there to be any bitterness, which in as people, as human beings, especially when we go through hard things um, and have, quote, church hurt, which I hate that. Yeah. Um, you know, it is hard to have the right heart and the, and the right spirit. Um, but I love the church. I do too. Yeah. I, you know, I love it. And I, I really do believe in it still. I'm really trying to really believe in people. We've always been taught that you've got to be really, really careful what you say um, about leadership in the church. Yeah. And, um, and I agree with that. I agree with that. I think it's important that we're, that we're careful in what we do. The Bible says uh, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, mm -hmm. but against principalities yeah. and powers mm -hmm. and, and rulers of the darkness of the world, uh, all that stuff. And I, I really screwed that scripture up. But, um, <laughs> but we wrestle not against flesh and blood. We wrestle against spirits. And there is a difference between addressing and, and criticizing a person and addressing a spirit. Mm -hmm. And we have, we have to find that balance in this season of the church because we see a lot of unhealth. Mm -hmm. In leaders, in, in churches, in systems, in toxicity, in, in all of those things, and, and in the saints, and it, like yeah. all the way across the board, yeah. we see that. But we've been, we've been taught so strongly to not say anything that it goes unaddressed. Mm -hmm. And that's a, that's a problem. Mm -hmm. That's a problem. And there's this delicate balance. And, and then there's the, the why. Why are we doing, why are we having these conversations? Why are we going to have this conversation today? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because there is something that needs to be, there are things that need to be addressed in the church. We want to see them addressed. But if all we do is bellyache about it, yeah. then it's just criticism and it's just gossip and it's just all of that stuff. And that's, and that's where it's wrong. But if we're searching for a solution, right? The Bible says, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. We study to figure the things out that need to be figured out. And then we try to find a solution. Yeah. So mm -hmm. what's the solution to that? You know, you, it is such a thin line between, you know, trying to find a solution and talking about things and gossiping. And I really appreciate that you you bring that up. Mm -hmm. um, Thin line between love and hate. Remember that movie? <laughs> <laughs> but it's yeah, true. Yeah. It's like, it do you love true. the church or do you hate the church? Mm -hmm. and, and why are we talking about it? Yeah. So, yeah, you know, um, I think the reason why, you know, like for me, and I, I just, I like to speak from experience, okay? Yeah. So you, you don't know there's a problem until usually you're on the other side of it or you go through something and you experience it for the first hand. And I kind of mm -hmm. feel like that's kind of where how I'm showing up right now. It's yeah. like, okay, I'm on the other side of walking through something very painful and walking, you know, I'm not, 
it's it's there's a lot of like I'm not just singling in to one specific person or one specific place, mm-hmm. right. you know. But I had to walk through an experience to where my eyes were opened, mm-hmm. and I had this aha moment of oh boy, we could have done better. We should have done, done better. And this is this is what I was a part of, right? And mm-hmm. I was probably a part of the problem because. You know, it was like I, I literally had a moment where I was like, you know what? Who have I hurt mm-hmm. as, a, as a pastor's wife? Who, who should I have showed up for a little mm-hmm. bit more during their time of pain and seizing su- or suffering? Um, or what did I say yep. to a person? Or who did I overlook as a person in authority, um, a person who was looked at as a pastor. Mm-hmm. And now that I'm on the other side of it, you know, it's, it's, it's incredible how your perspective shifts and mm-hmm. how your eyes are open. Mm-hmm. So for me, that is why I'm here. That is why yeah. I want to talk about these things because yeah. I feel like when we are having these conversations, my prayer is that the person on the other side of this listening, mm-hmm. that maybe they have that same aha moment yeah. and yeah. really take a look yeah. at their self. And, and, and this, is, this is just as much a conversation for church leaders as it is for the people who Absolutely. are disgruntled by yeah. the church. Absolutely. In fact, more so. More so. More so because we're, we've, we've all been on high-level leadership at churches. We've all, we've, I grew up as a pastor's kid. You yeah. grew up as a pastor's yeah. kid, Natalie. And, and so we, we love the church. Yeah. I think that's why we're it's here. The thin line between love and hate. We love the church. This is why we're talking about this yeah. because we don't want to see the church destroy itself. No. And by I, let me let me be clear, by the church, I mean the small C church. The big C church is going to be fine mm-hmm. because the church of God is the the body of Christ is fine. We he he doesn't need us to rescue the body of Christ. No. Right. Right. That's taken care of. Yeah. But all of the little C churches that mm-hmm. are inside the big C church is where we have, where we start to see issues. Not mm-hmm. all of them, but we start to see that. Does that yeah. make sense? Yeah. 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 So, but, but it is about, it is about the love for the church and not, and I, I have had a few, just to be honest with you, I've had a few people, pastors that have reached out to me really upset when I have, when I have conversations online about things that need to be changed. Oh, no, I've seen them. <laughs> yeah. like, really upset. Re- really yeah. upset. Like, Ooh. yes. It, it's, 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 Jesus, take the yeah. keyboard. Yeah, and then upset. the DMs. And then, and then the DMs. And the behind-the-scene conversations. Listen, yes. it's, a whole, it's a whole level of, of um, and sometimes it's vitriolic. It's like they, mm-hmm. they, they hate yeah. What I'm what I'm saying, and the conversation is always, but it, it, it's always this. It's always this. It's you're destroying the good name of the church mm-hmm. in a bunch of people that already are on the edge of of being upset and bitter about things. Mm-hmm. You're destroying. Why would you do that? We're this is the time. This is the time in, in the church that we need people to be all all in together, and that we're all doing the same thing together. And, and I'm saying, I, I don't know that that's true. I, I, think, yeah. I think the the issue is not people talking about the church so much it, as the people who have been wounded by people in the church, mm-hmm. they're, they're hurt. Here's the thing. What we have is we have God and the church. They are not the same. Mm-hmm. They are two separate things. Yeah. Right? But in, in the hearts and minds of the people of God, they are inextricably linked. Yes. They are right together like this. And when something happens that wounds their soul in the church, mm-hmm. they equate that to God wounding them. Yes. Mm-hmm. Even though they're completely, completely two separate things, yeah. they equate them as God, as God wounding them. So what can we do to better ourselves and to, to look honestly and clearly at ourselves as leadership in a church at, at, at church. And somebody's going to, somebody right now is going to say, yeah, you, you ain't, you ain't at a church right now. <laughs> right. I'm not. And, and, and part of the reason is because I'm, I'm reconstructing yeah. what that looks like yeah, in my life. Me too. And, and so, but I've been there mm-hmm. for 30 years yeah. uh, in, in leadership and ministry, that sort of thing. But how can we 
not jerk the cover off necessarily yeah. of, of all the bad people. How can we jerk the cover off of the toxic systems and stuff that we've put in place that are causing this hurt yeah. and causing people to be ripped or to rip themselves away from God yeah. because they've, they've been hurt so much. I, I yeah. wish I had, I wish I had that answer. Um, <laughs> I will, I do want to say this though, like Richie, I mean, I, I just want to be, you know, very like, let me just put it all out there. Yeah. I mean, months, well, I mean, even a couple of years ago, you were already putting out this message, you mm -hmm. know, you were already kind of going there. And I was one of those people in the system, a, mm -hmm. a pastor, you know, <laughs> that would read your post and feel some sort of way about it. Because mm -hmm. I'm like, I, I understand. Mm -hmm. I, I, I feel like I can, I'm in a unique position because I've yeah. been on both sides, right? And yeah. so I understand the pastor who can get upset with mm -hmm. you and feel like, wait, like, no, no, you're, you're going to offend these, these people. And why, like, let's point out the good things about church, because I have been on that side. Mm -hmm. I've actually read some of your posts and I love you, you know, I, know, I love I know, you, I know. but I've read some of your posts and been like, okay, I need to understand this better. Mm -hmm. And all I'm saying is now that I'm on the other side of it, mm -hmm. um, and I know we're going to dive into, you know, some of the things that you've recently, um, talked about, but, Literally, I feel like I can see now, like I can see yeah. from, you know, another person's perspective. And that is just my hope. It's like, okay, like pastors, like we have to wake up, stop. Honestly, like we're making it about ourselves. Yeah. We're, we're, we're easily offended yeah. by mm -hmm. what you're saying instead of just saying, okay, maybe there's some truth here. Yeah. Like, let me, let me really listen and make sure that I'm actually doing everything that I can be doing to truly um, fulfill the, the calling that God has put on my life. Mm -hmm. We do make it about ourselves as we leaders. Do. Yeah. We yeah, do. It, we be, it becomes a personal affront when somebody says, we'll "I'm not coming that, back to your church didn't. again." Oh yeah, mm -hmm. right. Like I'm not. I'm not coming. I'm going over there to that church. And then you are personally. It's a personal affront. Yes, I know. It because hurts because it hurts. It hurts, yeah. it hurts yeah. because you feel like they rejected you they as a leader, yes. right? Yeah. And so then we get in this mindset of of protection, and yeah. we're going to protect ourselves. And and so part of that is well, we can. Just, remind people that they're not supposed to talk about leadership <laughs> and that's how yeah. we can that's how one way we can protect ourselves by pulling out the bible and saying well it says touch not mine anointed do my prophet no harm you know those sorts of things and we really believe it and i think for the most part people are sincere in 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 the beginning they're they're sincere to to that i'm i i want to do the right thing i want to do all of that stuff but then we get our feelings and we personally invested and all this stuff yeah. and we forget that it's not the, it's 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 not our kingdom it's the kingdom of god yeah. and when we start making it our kingdom our little fiefdom then all of a sudden we start having we start feeling bad feeling some kind of way when somebody leaves or or some kind of way when somebody says something bad about pastors mm -hmm. or or anything like that and then we, and then we're in, we're on the defense because we're we're offended. Well, mm -hmm. I think too that we're, we easily forget that whatever that person went through and whatever they're saying, whatever they're feeling, that is their real experience. Yeah. Whether mm -hmm. you agree with what that person yeah. like said about right. you or not, right. um, that is their real experience, and you have to respect that. I may yeah. not agree with you, yeah. Richie, or I may not agree with everything that you yeah. say, yeah. Natalie. But mm -hmm. that is your experience, yeah. and and we have to honor that about yeah. each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We do. yeah, and Richie and I are definitely not going to agree on everything. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Enneagram. <laughs> okay, don't get me started. I'm not even getting into it. Yeah. No need. <laughs> Save no that need. for the Facebook that, comments. That's a whole other episode. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. What yeah, and I think that it's just this whole, when we start making it about ourselves, I think that's when we get into that. The big thing that we've been talking about and has been on our mind is like, church versus business yeah. or church mm -hmm. as a business. Mm -hmm. Because when it becomes about us, mm -hmm. then we start looking to how do we improve our, not about how do we improve the message, how do we share the gospel, but how do we improve ourselves? Not that there's anything wrong with self-improvement, yeah. obviously, but so much focus gets put on us 
So then the pastor's like, oh, okay, well, who do I learn from? What do CEOs do? Mm-hmm. And But the mission and the goal of a business and a church are not the same. So it's a flawed thought yeah. to start out with. Um, and I know that's one of the big topics well, that we've what been you, thinking about. Didn't you say this the other day? I don't know if it was you, but... I, uh, I've heard it before. It's not original to me, it's for sure. It's good. I'll claim is, it. <laughs> <laughs> I said ahead. it. I said it. <laughs> no. Go right ahead. No, it's, the church is not supposed to be an organization. It's an organism. Mm. Yeah. It's, it's a good. living, it's really breathing good. thing. It's different than, than, than an organization. Mm-hmm. But we make it an organization. So mm-hmm. it starts out, uh, that's, that's part of the deal. It, it always starts out good. Yeah. Right, it starts out with a, with the right intent. The best intention. And who was it? Yeah. Was it Uzzah? That the the Ark of the Covenant was on a cart, mm-hmm. right? It was on this cart, and it's being mm-hmm. taken through the city, and it starts to bobble. Mm-hmm. And the guy reaches out because he feels like he's got to help the Ark, and he touches the Ark, and he's struck dead. And what we end up doing is we try to manage a move of God. Yeah. And I've, I've heard that before. I've heard managing a move of God. No, we steward a move of God. Mm-hmm. We can't manage it because it's not ours to manage. Yeah. No. And if we touch it, then we've done a disservice to ourselves and to the kingdom of God because it wasn't ours in the first place. That's right. Mm-hmm. That's you know? right. But, but to your point, yeah. Natalie, we, we, there needs to be some structure. Yeah. Right? Yes. Yeah. Well, here, I am super guilty. You guys know I had a corporate career for yep. over 20 years, the last 10 years as an executive. And there were many times, and this isn't about one church, it's about many churches. I'm a pastor's kid. Mm-hmm. So grew up in church, been in ministry. Um, and many times, because of my corporate career, I'm the one that's like, man, if this place just operated more like a business. Mm-hmm. And so I'm guilty. We've all been and guilty I've, of I've, that. I'm yeah. guilty yeah. of that thought. Mm-hmm. And then when I really retired um, from my corporate career to go into ministry full time, I was like, well, how wrong was I? Mm-hmm. Um, because I've seen both sides of it and the goal is not the same. No. So it can't function the same. Now, are there areas? Yeah, sure. Do we need to pay people a livable wage? Do we need to follow laws? Yes, absolutely. absolutely. So in that regard, sure, it can be business-like. Mm-hmm. But everything else, no. And if and if that's your thought towards it, then you're wrong. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I, I think... You know, when you get to the point, like even from an employment standpoint, when when we start the mindset of, well, if they don't get the job done, we just fire them mm-hmm. instead of pastoring them yeah. and giving them more grace in those situations. Now, you can't keep everybody all the time. I'm yeah. just, that's not being realistic. But all of a sudden, then we start to walk with them through whatever the crap is they're going through, Mm -hmm. right? Whatever that is that we're going through, instead of saying, hey, you know what? You're not doing your job. We'll find somebody who does your, who who will do that job better and and faster. Mm -hmm. Uh, Instead of going, hey, what's going on in your life? Yeah. Why is this happening? And how can we come alongside you and help you? And how can we help you build, grow and and then have grace? Mm -hmm. Like if it takes 18 months before they get to where they really need to be, okay why are we in such a rush yeah mm-hmm. no that's that good sense? yeah well you know something we used to say all the time is people over process mm-hmm. and i think that really was our heart is yes. people mm-hmm. over process but i know as like the senior pastor of a large church and especially as we we grew grew and grew bigger um you know there was more people in between um us mm-hmm. yeah. and the congregation. Mm-hmm. And so that message just got more and more diluted. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, so cool. I really do think like that was, that was our heart. Um, but then you hear stories of like how a certain situation was handled. Mm-hmm. And I know for me, like I was just mortified, just yeah. mortified because mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, well, what happened? Like our, when we started this, our intentions were pure. Our intentions were good. They mm-hmm. were where they needed to be. And some, somewhere along the way, um, in the midst of like all this growth and all these people now that are in between us, yeah. you know, that we thought we were doing the right thing because we're looking to the even bigger churches to see, okay, like, 
we we do need some kind of structure yeah. here. Mm-hmm. Right. We do need some kind of systems here, and here's the systems they put in place. So we're going to implement those systems. But mm-hmm. now we have all we're like twenty people deep, right. you know, mm-hmm. yeah. before you can even get to us. Yeah. And they are you know speaking on behalf of us, and then all these people that well, we're supposed to be changes. pastoring, yes, right. yes, are getting hurt. They're getting hurt, and what what all of a sudden is. You're not a pastor anymore. Right. No, we're not. You're and a CEO. We're a CEO. And, and the church will never be effective as a business because it's not, and also because they're not good at it. No. <laughs> Churches aren't good at operating like a business, okay? Right. Because it doesn't work. Um, because right. it doesn't work, and it's not to. supposed to. No. no. And so that's why, and again, this is just going back to personal experience, but a lot of times what you see is your staff are the least pastored people yes yeah in the church yeah. yes that is true and that's and it's a sad thing mm-hmm. it's a sad thing but again it becomes transactional yes. the relationship well, because, becomes yeah. transactional started off as a calling yes now right. it's just a, a job moves from yeah. relational to transactional yeah. yep yeah on the staff side yeah yes now we we do a good job of keeping the typically the the churches do a good job of, of keeping the attendees happy mm-hmm. because that's the goal, right? That's right. we we want as many butts in the seat as we can possibly get, mm-hmm. and so we're going to keep them happy at the expense of the people that are doing all the work. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and we end up hurting the people that are doing all the work at instead of caring for them and then letting that trickle down. It becomes right. something else. Right. Well, and I mean, again, just back to like a corporate environment. I worked for a brand, very well-known brand, um, and their whole thought process was it was people first. And it was like, if we take care of our team, they're going to take care of the client. We don't even ever have to worry about the client mm-hmm. because if we take care of the team. So it's like, man, if you want to embrace a business strategy, embrace that one. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> take care of your team exactly. and they'll take care of the church. Um, and the shame of it is there are some corporations that have a better culture than I've worked church at them. culture yeah. by yeah. far, by far. Keep going. What you were yeah, doing, no, so. I was just, I've, I've worked at them, you know, and again, this is not... I've been in church and around church my whole life. And the whole part, the whole reason why I'm a part of this conversation is like you said at the beginning, it's because I love the church and I'm a, I'm a defender of her and I always will be. I mean, I grew up the way you grew up. If the lights are on, then your butt is in one of those (laughs) seats because your dad's the pastor. Um, And so it's out of a deep love that I have for the church that makes me want to say like, Hey, wait, look, can we push pause and really think about what we're doing and what we're saying and mm. um, the impact that we're having on people? And I know this conversation isn't necessarily about staff, but that's kind of where we are right now. But yeah. like love people, the first opportunity you have every day to every love day. people well is your staff. Yeah. And I think we get this tendency in our heads that, that uh, well, you're doing the work of God. That should be, that should be enough for you. Like, it, yeah. like, you don't get, it's not about perks. It's not about any of that stuff. Um, and it's also not about good pay because you're, you're doing the work of God. So you, you sacrifice to come do the work of God. I get that. I get that on some level, but you still have to care for the people. Yeah. You yeah. still have to care for the people and, 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 and lead them and mm-hmm. pastor them and be able to separate yeah. those two things. Yeah. I've worked for churches who've taken care of us mm-hmm. um, the way that they should take care have taken care of us um, as far as like being paid good and Mm -hmm. just seeing that we have everything um, that we need. But when it comes to like the spiritual component though, and like really caring for our our souls, they, they may miss out on that. Yeah. You Mm -hmm. know, so maybe it's, it's just, where do we find, like, I, I honestly guys, like I, I'm at a loss here. You know, you, you talk about, you know, taking care of your people and how that trickles down when you're talking about the corporate world mm. and like a, from a CEO standpoint. But when you talk about the church world, yes, like we should be taking care of our people, but also like we, we are the ones like mm. as pastors, like we should be more hands on. Yeah. And what's sad for me is there, there are people, um, 
in my experience, like I can remember hearing from people that started with us, um, helped us plant the church who we, we were very, very relational with in the very beginning. And then as we grew, um, again, 20 people deep in, Mm -hmm. we, we, we may go years before we ever talk to those people. Mm. And that's not pastoring. And I can remember no, like telling ourselves the, the lie of, well, we at this size, we, we can't pastor them all. We have to be selective. Yeah. We can't pastor them all. But that's when we're, we're busy. We're not actually in the day-to-day pastoring, doing what God has called us to. Mm-hmm. It became, it's just become bigger than us. Yeah. It become yeah. a brand. It become managing, oh, yeah. managing the brand, mm-hmm. managing yep. this, mm-hmm. you know, this church and, you know, trying to pastor pastors and teach them mm-hmm. how to um, build their church. And, yeah. mm-hmm. you know, it was just all about the day to day and less about the people. Yeah. 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 How about, how about instead of managing your brand, how about just being a member of the kingdom? Yeah. Right. That's, that's what we're supposed to be doing. Right. Mm-hmm. We're supposed to be kingdom minded in this. But the, the, here's, here's the thought on that is uh, it, the answers to a lot of the issues that we find in the church, a lot of them can be found in the Word of God. And we, yeah. we kind of overlook them yeah. in the process. Because it's not in a leadership book. Right, oh, right. Sorry. Whoops. Sorry. Whoopsie. <laughs> Whoopsie. But, we, but we have. We've, com- we've, we've, we've complicated some of the simplicity of the Word of God yeah. and in the interest of trying to manage a move of God and create momentum and, and all of that sort of thing. But here's the thing. If you're moving too fast yeah. to pastor your people well, then you're moving too fast. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That means, and you know what that means? That means you you take your foot off the gas, mm-hmm. and you fix the issue. Yeah. And does that mean you don't grow? Yeah. And. Yeah, but we lie to ourselves. We yeah. we tell ourselves. We we create our story, and you, of course you have people who are puffing you up. You mm-hmm. know, I mean that was at least our experience where you're like, well, if the door is open, that must be God. <laughs> not always. No, not yeah. every opportunity is your opportunity. Yeah. No, you know, sometimes too much is too much. Yes. Yeah. Like well, I, I'm, well, just real quick, like I'm, I'm right now just trying to figure out like really what did God intend mm-hmm. for, for us? Like we can only handle so much, so yeah. much. Yep. We can, I don't know that, yeah. and I'm going on off of a limb here. Yeah. I don't know that we're supposed to have mega churches yeah Dang. it's just too much it's too you much. just stepped off well, in it because yeah. <laughs> I, I feel the same way yeah i don't yeah. think well, we were created loud. for that well, well, that that i car. think <laughs> what i was what i was thinking about when you were talking jen is like it was growing wide and not growing deep no. yes. and and that's a problem you know yep. why um, is a tree mm-hmm. such a uh, an important thing that you see all throughout the bible mm-hmm. because it grows deep mm-hmm. before it grows wide. It has to start down here, and you have mm-hmm. to have the roots deep. Yeah. But keep going. And I could go all day on garden analogies. <laughs> oh, please do. I love it. <laughs> okay. I love it. It's I'm the joking. truth. I yeah. mean, you know, but again, it's the... <laughs> You, yourself gets in the way, and yeah. we all do it. We all do because it. we want to see well, success. We right? want to see success, yeah. and and as a pastor, I mean, you love, you really do. I hope you love people. If if you're if you don't, you're doing the wrong thing. But um, <laughs> you know, you want to see revival, and yeah. you want to you know feel the church. But also, you know, I've I've heard so many pastors say, well, how do I grow my church? How do I do what you guys were able to do? Mm-hmm. And I'm like, be careful what you wish for. Because yeah. I mean, you can, yeah, like you can catch momentum and maybe you're planting a church, like, you know, a couple of churches a year. And guys, like so, there is such thing as too much yeah. to where it gets to just to this monster that yeah. you, you, you're just totally detached from. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, well, you're and that's struggling a, just to all the, the heavy weight that's yeah. on you. I don't think that God intended for it no. to be that way. Well, no. and that's a 
that to me is a part of the whole problem with the celebrity pastor culture, yeah. which really is objectification of pastors yeah. and their families. It is. And I could talk Very about much. that all day. It's something I've experienced personally being a pastor's kid. Mm -hmm. um, but that weight, being a pastor and being in ministry and leadership is always going to come with a heavy weight. Yes, I don't it believe should. it's supposed to crush you. No. I, I just, no. I don't believe that. I, I really feel like this objectification of where pastors, their wives, their families, they're not even viewed as people anymore. Mm -hmm. It's just about what you can do, show mm -hmm. up, do this, say this. It's like, we've talked about this before, like people always say pastors' kids are the worst. Are they really? Or mm -hmm. are your expectations wrong because of what That's their it. dad does? That's, mm -hmm. it. That's what it is. Yeah. Pastors' kids aren't any worse than anybody nope. else's kids. But because their dad's a pastor, you have a different expectation for them. That's mm. unfair and unrealistic. And yeah. I grew up with that. As much as Same. my parents tried to shield me from it, I still grew up with that. I actually did a post last year that went like semi-viral about it. And I got some of the most wonderful and encouraging and also some of those hateful comments I've ever got on social <laughs> media for speaking out about that. Mm -hmm. Because I am an advocate for pastors and yes. their families because that's... That's my heart, and that's how I grew up. And I'm always, you know, I'll get in a fight with somebody. <laughs> <laughs> my my dad one time told told me this too. I remember we were. It was probably about four years before he passed away, three years before he passed away, um, and I was probably about eighteen or so, and my brother was seventeen, and and he he called a family meeting basically, and just said, set us down in the living room, kind of like this, and just said, uh, guys, I've I made a mistake, and I was like, "Oh crap! <laughs> this is not this is not what I was wanting. To, where this was going." And he said, uh, "He said I have spent my life with the priorities of God, church, and family." Mm -hmm. And he said, "From this moment on, it will be God first, family second, mm -hmm. church third." Yeah, yeah. And if we can get if if we can if we find ourselves so busy and so stressed out that we aren't able to take care of our families, mm -hmm. then man, we're too busy and we're too stressed yeah. out. Yeah. Like yeah. this is, this was not God's plan. No. no. This was never God's plan for us to sacrifice our family on the altar of the church. No. Yeah. Never, ever his plan. Mm -hmm. And he, in fact, he didn't make Abraham give Isaac. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. He just wanted to know that he was willing to give everything, mm -hmm. but he never made him actually sacrifice Isaac. No. And if we lose our family in the interest of the church, we've lost. Yeah. We've lost. Mm -hmm. yeah. And and it all goes back to we weren't created for this. Yeah. We weren't created to be at this level. Here's here's a big problem with, with a, a lot of modern day church is that we put all the five-fold ministry on the yeah. shoulders of one, one man. person. Yeah. Yeah. And he's expected to be the pastor, the the teacher, the evangelist, mm -hmm. the 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 uh what are the other four, two? I can't remember right <laughs> off the top of my head. But but we're now. but we're supposed to be all five, the apostle yeah. and the prophet. That's yeah. and, and we, that's not what we were created to no. do. We no. cannot be all five. No. And so the fivefold ministry is not an effect into in typical churches as much as it should yeah. be. Well, it's because it's Again, we're going back to the business world. You can go to Barnes & Noble right now, and there's a whole section of books on how to be a complete leader. And I have a newsflash. You can't. There no. was one complete leader <laughs> that ever walked this earth, and it was Jesus. It's right. not us. Right. So why do we keep putting that pressure on ourselves mm -hmm. that we have to be all things to all people? We're going to fail. Right. That's how you set yourself up for failure. Yeah. And at the beginning of the conversation, you were saying how the church and God are so intertwined for people that's why people get so hurt and lose out because they have this unreal expectation where they're expecting God from man and they're never going to get that. No. And so they're not. They're not. <laughs> and it's so, you know, pastors are just people. They're flawed they're, people. They're flawed people. Yes. You know, I, I have a front row seat of growing up. My mm. dad was my hero. And um, you know, the most meaningful relationship of my life before my husband and my kids was my dad. But he was not perfect. Right. He was far from it. He did his best. <laughs> he was a great Same. pastor. Yep. He left a legacy, and mm -hmm. it didn't have anything to do with dollar amounts. Just going to put and that out there. we kind of need to talk about <laughs> that right there. But go ahead, finish your thought, and then we're going to jump into that. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like, it's 
pastors are just people, and well, we have to remember that. What's so funny about that, um, you know, you guys were raised church. I was raised around church. Like, we were, like, the Easter attenders. <laughs> so I knew, like, what it was. Church but, adjacent. <laughs> yeah, but did not know. Like, I did church not adjacent. know. Like, I was on the outside looking in. But it was so funny because when I— um, met Jeremy um, and started dating Jeremy, so, uh, someone actually said, I, I forget the phrase um, that they used. It was, I think I was called a gold digger or something. And I'm like, <laughs> wait a minute. Like Jeremy drove his beat up Tacoma <laughs> pickup truck. He lived in a trailer on the worst side of town. You had to pass a strip bar to get to his house, okay? And so I'm like, what are they talking about? A gold digger. And so literally, I'm just now new to the church. And they were like, oh, because she's just about the foster dynasty. And I'm like, <laughs> who do these people think they are? <laughs> like, literally, I'm, I'm from the outside looking into this whole, like, new church world, and they're talking about this foster dynasty. And as, you know, as we got married and I got mm -hmm. into it all, I'm like, the organization that we were a part of, this family was viewed because there were so many of them. There yeah. were so many like pastors and, and I get it. Like people, you have to have people you look up to. Mm -hmm. right. And so in this organization, because of who Jeremy's grandfather was and his aunts and uncles mm -hmm. and father and mom, you know, they were looked at as these great people who did right. great things mm -hmm. for the kingdom of God. But I would just sit back and chuckle because I'm thinking, oh my gosh, like there's a whole nother world out here, people. Like, I don't know what you guys are talking about. But I say that to just highlight that oftentimes people not, I don't think they know what they're doing. Again, we need yeah. to be able to look up to people. Like yeah. pastors are my, some of my heroes, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. I think we can all say that. Yeah. You know, we, we need those people in our lives, but we often put our pastors and their families up on these pedestals. Yeah. We deify them. We right? do. Yeah, right. And, you know, it's like, gosh, like, you know, we, we are flawed. Like yeah. you said, Natalie, yeah. we are just as flawed. Like mm -hmm. if you were to see the chaos in my heart, home and how sometimes I speak to my children and how they speak to me, you could be like, whoa, wait a minute, you know, yeah, exactly. like yeah. we are so very flawed. But I re remember, you know, as we became senior pastors, you know, I, I would get a front row seat, Richie, to, to people, um, to this happening to yeah. my now ex-husband, you yeah. know, like seeing the the conversations and the way that they were treating him. I will never forget the moment when we were on vacation and we met this precious, precious girl um, on the beach. And um, she met my husband for the first time. And she apparently, you know, knew who we were and uh, just started crying and shaking because she was you know, meeting Jeremy and my mm. little, my little kids were just looking like, what is happening right now? <laughs> like, why, yeah. why is this yeah. woman like treating my dad? Like he's a celebrity. Like that's how we would treat a celebrity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I get it. Like mm. I get it to an extent, like apparently, and this is how I had to explain it to my children afterwards because they, it kind of freaked them out. Um, you know, like she had, um, she had, she was probably watching, you know, my yeah. husband deliver mm -hmm. a, ser a sermon mm -hmm. and the Holy Spirit was speaking to her and mm -hmm. she had some kind of, you know, transformation mm -hmm. or something yeah. because of the message, yep. you know, that my um, husband at the time was delivering. And so they kind of go hand in hand, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. and she mm -hmm. looks up to him and she had this incredible experience. But we can't, like, we have to just be careful. Like, I've just yeah. seen it so many times where we just take these people and we put them on this pedestal, and then when they fall, mm -hmm. yeah, and you got to separate, you have to separate the anointing and the word, yeah, that comes from them. Separate that from the person, you do. We, we don't, we don't, but we're supposed to, to. There's this story in First Kings chapter 13 where this, this man of God, uh, goes and, uh, I'm trying to remember the um, the name of the king. Was it Jeroboam? I can't remember. But uh, he goes and he he curses. I'm going to need you to start remembering because <laughs> every time you don't and we don't answer, it highlights like how ignorant we are. Here about it. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. 
<laughs> no, it's true. No, but I, I, I can't remember right off. You know what? I could actually look it up. Hold on. First, first, let's see. First Kings 13, I think it is. Uh, You're the only one who uh, brought your Bible to Well, I, I brought, brought a Bible to a podcast. What I actually you know? had one oh. on this coffee table, but believe it or not, my dog um, must have Satan in him because he ate it. <laughs> I'm still kind of bitter. <laughs> uh, here it is. Um, it, there was a man of God who, who went from who left came from Judah to Bethel as Jeroboam was standing by the altar to make an offering, and and he basically um, um, uh, admonished uh, Jeroboam and was trying to get him to turn and, and change some things. And he, but he said, uh, so so the the king heard what the man of God had cried out against the altar at Bethel. He and he, he did this thing. He's like, sees him and his hand withered. You've heard, you remember that story, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. His, hand, his hand withered. And, and then he said, man of God, can you make it, you know, fix it? And, and, and the man of God did. And, and it came out and he, and he's like, I want you to come to my house and eat with me. And this guy goes, no, he said, um, uh, I'll give you a gift is what he said. And the man of God said, even if you were to give me half your possessions, I wouldn't go with you, nor would I eat bread or drink water here. For I was commanded by the word of the Lord. You must not eat bread or drink water or return by the way you came. So he took another road and left and didn't do it. That's pretty cool, mm-hmm. right? Because mm-hmm. he's a man of God and he recognized I'm being tempted by celebrity, yeah. like by the opportunity to have access to these certain guys, mm-hmm. I'm being tempted by that. And I'm not going to do it because the Lord said, don't do it. Mm. Right. But then he goes on. And a prophet, an old prophet, hears about him, and I know this is a little long, been going off a little bit of thing, but there's a there's a point to it. The prophet hears about him, and the prophet says, "I want to go meet him." So he goes and meets the man of God, and he sits with the man of God and talks to him. And he said, "He said, I want you to come home to my house and eat with me." And the man of God said the same thing to him initially that he, that the king said. And he said, "No, I can't. I'm not. The, the Lord told me not to eat bread or drink water or go by this, go back by the same way." And the prophet said, "Well, I'm a man of God too." And and an angel of the Lord came to me and told me that it's okay. And then it says in here, it says, "But he was lying, mm. right?" And it's okay for you to do it. And the man of God said, "Okay, then I'll do that." And he goes with the prophet. And then the, then the prophet turns around and says, "You you disobeyed the the voice of God." He disobeyed the voice of God, leave, and he leaves, and he gets killed, and it's a whole bunch of whole bunch of mess. He, he, he dies as a result of that. And so first of all, on that, what it tells us is it tells us that even people with the best intentions mm-hmm. yeah. who did a great job on one front can make a mistake down the road mm-hmm. and screw up because they, well, partially because they heard something from another man of God, and mm-hmm. they thought, well, maybe God wasn't speaking to me, and they didn't have a sure grasp mm-hmm. on what God was actually t- telling them. And so they compromised in the middle of uh, a temptation in, in, a, in a decent situation. But at the very end, the, the prophet says, I want to be buried by the bones of that man. And why would he want to be buried by the bones of that man? He says, because the word that he spoke is still going to come to pass. Mm. The word that he spoke to Jeroboam at the beginning is still going to come to pass. So what you end up with is you've got to understand that the man of God, the voice of God speaks through the man of God, but the man of God is going to screw it up. Yes, yeah. he is. And, yeah. But the, the word is still going to re, not, never return void. So if you don't separate yeah. the two, the voice of God and what God is saying from the man, then you end up with a celebrity situation. Mm-hmm. And so... The church, the people of the church are just as much to blame as that Absolutely. as, as, oh, as yeah. the people are, if oh, yeah. not more. I would yeah. say it oftentimes maybe starts there. Yes. And mm-hmm. that, that's been my experience. It starts there. And of course, people people not meaning to. Yeah. I don't think they mean to. Again, we all need somebody to look to. We right. all need a we mentor. Do. We all have that person. Where we're like, oh, we want to be more like them. Or we just think they're amazing. And we, we hang on every word. You know, we, we are all guilty of it. Um, so I would say it starts there. And then, you know, our ego enters and yeah. we start to believe our own press. That, and that's, and where, that's where the problem yeah. is, right? Yeah. That's where right. it is. We, we've been set into a system that, that fosters that celebrity status. Mm-hmm. And then we believe it. We believe yeah. it. And so now we're also culpable. Yes. Mm-hmm. Both of us. Yes. And so then, you know, something, um, I'm just going to be, you know, very transparent here. Something that 
you know, you, you, you start to elevate, you know, people are putting you up, then Mm -hmm. you start to believe it and you're just, you're on the rise. Right. And you enter that celebrity, um, pastor status. Well, Mm -hmm. then all of a sudden you're, you're, that's where you start to look around and Mm -hmm. say, okay, well, who else, Yeah, you know, I now have, I've arrived. And so Mm -hmm. who else is doing it this way? Because I don't know how to manage this Mm because we're not supposed to be managing this. And so you start to look for these systems. And you start to look to the people who have gone before you and it looks like, well, they're doing whatever they're doing. They're doing it just fine. And even some things that may not sound right. And you, I I don't want to give, I do want to give examples, but I'm not going to go there. Um, You know, like. They just, yeah, like you're, you're, you're having that struggle of, uh, I don't know, this is crossing the line. It's okay because, you know what, um, that church over there who's, who's yeah. been doing it for a while, well, they're doing it, so it must be okay. It's like what you just said, Richie. Yeah. Like the yeah. Holy Spirit is trying to speak to you and, yeah. and your radar is going off. Like, ah, this is crossing a line. Yeah. yeah. But, another, but we'll look at another yeah, pastor say it's working yeah. great for us. and we'll look at the systems that they've put in place yeah. and how they're doing church and, mm-hmm. you know, and we'll say, uh, but, but they're doing it and it's working for yeah. them. So even though it so, feels a little bit, it must be okay. It yeah. must I'm, be okay. I'm not going to hold on to that conviction because yeah, no, that's maybe what our, I'm well, wrong. That's when our convictions start to and slide. I think yeah. that the, the hardest lesson that I ever had to learn, um, in my life was, and, and I, I learned it and it was costly, but I will never, ever allow a man to discredit what God told me again. Yeah. Um, because God gave me a very, very specific word Mm. and I let a man discredit it. Yeah. Um, and it's exactly what you said. It was the Holy spirit. And I was like, well, it seems like this is okay. Mm-hmm. These people seem okay with it, and I mm-hmm. trust them. And um, it was a costly lesson for yeah. me, and yeah. a very valuable one. We've all been there. Mm-hmm. We're all guilty of it. And then, and then other things get introduced because we see, well, it's okay for them. So why isn't it okay for me? Even like mm-hmm. personal things, yeah. even yeah. Not, not just church stuff, but like. Well, well, those were the examples that yeah. weren't going there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you get like, well, they've got this and they do this mm-hmm. and, and they mm-hmm. separate themselves mm-hmm. from their people. Mm-hmm. Then then it that's probably good. That's probably yeah. good for me to do. I mm-hmm. should probably do that. It's probably healthy because their church is doing great. So it's probably healthy. Then maybe I need to do that. And so they, then we separate them, ourselves from people. Or then we then we allow ourselves these certain indulgences mm-hmm. and because they allowed it. Mm-hmm. But even if God said, for you, it's not okay. Mm-hmm. And, and that's where you seek out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Just because it works for you doesn't mean it works for me. Right. Just because it's okay for you doesn't mean it's okay for me. Right. So, Hey guys, I'm going to stop this episode right here. I know it was right in the middle of a conversation that we were having, but we're going to stop it right now because we start to dive into something completely different. So part two is going to be released next week, and we're going to talk a little bit more now about uh, about legacy, about giving, about finances, about how that kind of uh, is has been formed and, and in some ways malformed. I didn't want us to dive into that this week because it would have ended up being a two hour long podcast and we don't want to do that to you. Um, and so we're going we're gonna to start th- this part two starting next week. We'll just pick up where we left off in that conversation and we'll be going forward into that. So thank you so much for joining us on this churchish series of Make Peace With War. Hey guys, I want to take just a moment and tell you about a company that is doing something really, really unique in the space of marketing for churches. Zion Multimedia, owned by my friend Kyle Ewald, is making a massive shift to church marketing. They're really kind of reinventing that this market, the idea of, of marketing for churches. And I love it because it's a ministry first approach. Uh, I'm, I'm not a fan of icky marketing. I'm not a fan of the typical marketing that just says, hey, come come join what we're doing, you know, come see us for the Easter service or whatever. You know, I'm not, I'm not a big fan of just that kind of icky marketing. It, it's hard for me even to market a lot of my stuff because I just don't like that kind of marketing. And so, so what's 
so cool about this ministry first approach is it connects you deeply with the people that you are reaching out to almost immediately in the process. Uh, if if you followed me at all in social media, uh, which by the way is at the Richie Allen, if you don't follow me, so go there. <laughs> but if you see, there's the icky marketing part. Uh, but if you if you've followed me at all, you know that I'm a big believer in deep discipleship. And I do believe that the modern day church, for the most part, has kind of missed the mark in that area in favor of just pushing for that weekend service. And what you have to have for deep discipleship, first, you have to have deep connection. And what's so cool about what Zion is doing is that they are connecting you on a deep, deep level early in the process, one-to-one with the people that you're reaching out to. Um, and what this will do is when they do decide to come to church, they're already connected. It's all like they already feel like family before they ever walk in the door. They already feel like they know somebody before they ever walk in the door. And that is going to get them not only if they come, they're going to stay. And Zion has done such a great job that they have proven this is working. And there's there's a much greater uh result when you do it this way, this ministry first approach. Um, I, I'm, I think you, if you're a pastor or, or uh, a church leader of any kind in communications or, or uh, connections or anything like that, you need to reach out to them. And the best way to reach out to Kyle and his team is go to ziondoesitbetter.com slash Richie. ziondoesitbetter.com slash Richie. And they can get you set up. What's also cool right now is that they do a whole lot of other stuff. They do video production. They do websites. They do all kinds of stuff that uh, you guys would find useful. Right now, they're actually doing like 50% off on a website, which is just great. But don't sleep on this. This is something that you really want to get involved in. And it, it's a massive blessing for just a little bit of investment. So go check it out. ZionDoesItBetter.com slash Richie. Thanks for watching Make Peace With War. If you liked this episode, I'd really appreciate it if you'd like it, share it, and hit the subscribe button. You can check out our website at makepeacewithwar.com where you'll find out more about MPW, outtakes and resources from the show, show notes, links to my YouTube and IG channels, and more. Join us for upcoming episodes as we continue to learn how to become peaceful warriors. God bless you.